we can create descriptive statistics and plots for our continuous data using JASP. Now we're going to tackle using continuous data in JASP and creating the descriptive statistics to display those data points. If you've followed along with my previous video on JASP where I talked about descriptive statistics using categorical data, you'll remember that I ended that video showing you how to save the data set to the desktop. So it's possible that you already have this data set waiting for you on your desktop. But if not, here are the steps you're going to need to walk through in order to get the data set ready to analyze. If you already have the data set, feel free to skip ahead. Otherwise, here's what you'll need to do. The data are on the first tab of the Describing Data Week 3 Excel spreadsheet that I created. It's available in our class, but also through a link in the description for this video. We'll begin by opening up that data set in Excel. The data that we're going to use are on the first page of this data set. We have 50 dogs who were asked questions about how many toys they owned and what is their favorite toy. We made note of the dog breed and the dog size. This would be an ordinal variable. This would be a continuous or rather a categorical uh, nominal level variable. But this time we're going to use the toys owned variable for our descriptive statistics. However, before we can do anything, we've got to get this data out of Excel and into JASP. We know that JASP does not open Excel spreadsheets, so we're going to go to File, Save As, and save this as the dog toys data set, and I'm going to put that on the desktop. Instead of an Excel workbook, I'm going to change it to a comma delimited or CSV file, and click Save. There's a warning about the uh, saving this data, but uh, by default, it's going to look on the first tab. That's exactly what we want. So just click OK. And I'm going to minimize this in Excel. So here is my dogtoys.csv data set. If you had the data set from the previous example, it'd be right here. I'm going to double click. And this is going to open up JASP, which is actually necessary for the next step that we need for the CSV. But I also want to show you just how easy it is to open this up. And when you do, you have the results and all of the data points from our previous example still waiting for you right there. I'm going to hide this data. And return to this CSV data set. To open a CSV, you would go to the main menu. We will go to Open, Computer, Desktop, click. There's the CSV data set. Click Open. And I could save this as a dog toys data set. Yet again, just save that to the desktop. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though, simply because I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to close that. I'm going to pick up again here. If you've skipped ahead to this point, you haven't missed anything. All we did was open a CSV file in JASP. We're ready to pick up right where we left off. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this uh, data set that we have in JASP is that all of the things that we did last time, all of those analyses, are still in this data set. That's why it's advantageous to save our data set in the JASP format. It not only keeps the data, it keeps the analyses we've run previously. So let's take a look at the data. Again, to find the data, you would use this tab that says Show Data. Here are the data points. You can hide the data. And here are the results from that previous analysis where we used uh, the descriptive statistics for to uh, favorite toy, like Chew Toy and Chirpy Bird. And notice that in the descriptive statistics table, the mean and standard deviation are not present because it's not possible to calculate a mean or standard deviation for rope bone versus tennis ball. This information is going to remain right where it is. And we are going to twirl closed this descriptive statistics analysis, it's still there. If we ever want to see it again, we can open it up, review it. Let's twirl that closed. We're going to do a completely different analysis, still with descriptive statistics. So click on that descriptives box. And this time, we're going to use a scale variable or a continuous variable called toys owned. Let's move that into the variables box. You click on the variable name. You click on the arrow between the boxes. 
there's the arrow, there's the uh, variable that we're going to analyze. Now you'll notice that in the descriptive statistics that pop up, remember progressive disclosure is a big part of JASP, we see the information immediately. We don't have to click on anything else. But you notice there's a lot more information here, unlike that previous analysis where we didn't have these data points like mean and standard deviation. Uh, you may remember too that we used this transpose descriptives table to make this table horizontal, which I like because it creates, uh, saves me some vertical space uh, when I'm doing the write-up and putting this into uh, a paper that I'm going to be using. Now later on I'm going to show you more about descriptive statistics for uh, central tendency and variability that was going to be found right here. But basically I could click on any one of these. There's quartiles, there's the mode, uh, what else do we have? Uh, skewness, kurtosis. I can click on any of these and those will appear in my descriptive statistics table. But right now we are interested in doing some plotting. So let's go to basic plots. We're going to click on distribution plots. Immediately we get this histogram for our continuous data. Now you'll notice that the bins are not the same as they were when we did this example using Excel. However, we do have some options for bin width type. These are set by default. We have Sturgis and Scott and Doan. Or we have the option to simply do this manually. So for instance, we could create a number of bins like, like four and those bins are created automatically. Now previously we also used a frequency table for our descriptive statistics. Notice if we click on frequency tables, we get a blank frequency table. Uh, that's because frequency tables are not always typically very useful with continuous data, but if you really wanted that frequency table, we have to make a slight adjustment. It says maximum distinct values are 10, but our data set, the number of toys owned, runs up to 20. Click on 20, and there's my frequency table, running from 1 to 20. Now this is a fairly large and cumbersome frequency table. I may or may not want to uh, use this in some kind of write-up, but I have other ways of displaying data. One of the best would be the stem and leaf table. This gives me something that is like the histogram. It has a few more bins in it. Those bins could be changed. I can go uh, to two, for instance, double the size, or I could go to a 0.5, cut it in half. Let's go back to one real quickly. Um, I could also create other types of plots under the basic plots. Now, things like correlation plots, we would need two variables, so that one won't actually work. But I can get QQ plots and checking normality and so forth. Yeah, we have a strong deviation from normality, especially on the high end of that. A, a really easy way to see uh, those deviations from normality would be to go to customizable plots, where we can get something like a box plot. That's going to show me the outliers. So there's my deviation from normality on the high end of the scale, which is exactly what I'm seeing here in that QQ plot. There's a lot of ways that I could uh, add to or adjust these descriptive statistics, really depending upon what I wanted to show. But if I want a simple basic histogram, I'm going to get to that using my distribution plots under basic plots. And if I want to explore the nature of the data set even deeper, I have other ways that I could do that. I have much more to tell you about descriptive statistics. We're gonna explore more about that in future lectures and future videos. For now, we have the basics for creating our descriptive statistics, and we're ready to continue on learning more about basic business statistics.